Welcome to Seaford Lutheran Church's online service, and this is the uh, first service in, uh, for this year in winter. It's also National Reconciliation Week, and reconciliation is what Jesus and God, the Father, were all about. So the dictionary meaning of reconciliation is the process of making two people or groups of people friendly again after they've argued seriously or fought and, uh, and kept apart from each other. Now, we read in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation and it's in this spirit of love that we are called to reconcile with our indigenous brothers and sisters as well as to each other because God has in his grace reconciled us to himself let us pray we thank you heavenly father that by your grace you have made us your sons and daughters by reconciling us with yourself through your death and resurrection to pay the price for our sin. Help us to be your light in the darkness, to be compassionate like Jesus and always be ready to help others in need. Amen. And so we are reconciled with God. Does that mean that the road ahead through life is just all milk and honey? We still have our ups and downs. We still have our trials and tribulations, just like um, we'll hear from Paul in the, uh, his message in Corinthians. And as Pastor Kev will speak to us about, but all along through the trials and tribulations and the good times and the bad, we are carried in the arms of grace and love divine. <laughs>
first reading today comes from 2 Corinthians 4 verses 5 to 12. Life is not an easy road. Many of us have had to endure much. Sickness and death are sadly a real part of it. We see it every day throughout the world, even personally. We ask the question, how do we overcome? We believe that we can. We trust in different things. Some work, but most don't, as our brokenness continually knocks on our door. Death is at work in us. We're all plagued with the curse of sin. It drains us on every side. Even in those of us who proclaim faith in Christ our Lord. But we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Because there is more. In each of us who believe, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. This is not from us. We who believe always carry around in our body the death of, Christ, of Jesus. This is so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. By faith we endure. No more than that. We thrive. The life of Christ, won for us through the death and resurrection of our Lord, emanates from the faithful. His light shines through us as we endure the pain and suffering of life in this world. We ask, why doesn't God take it from us? Why doesn't God protect us and save us in this life? Well, he does. It is his strength and peace that gets us through. Not because we get it easier, no, but because the Lord of glory has provided for us a hope that is beyond our grasp, a hope that is lavished upon us by grace. Therefore, we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. This is the life that is at work in you. Praise God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O God. Our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 2, 23 to chapter 3, verse 6. And it's on the purpose of the Sabbath as a time for healing by Jesus. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples walked along. They began to pick some heads of grain. And Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal them, heal him on the Sabbath. And Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisee went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey everybody, Pastor Kev here. There's something serious to talk about today, but, but I also want to talk about hope. Now, before I come to faith in 1988, there was a, let's call it a common saying amongst the people I associated with, and forgive the crudity, but life sucks. And truth is that life is not an easy road at all. Around, well, around every corner, we don't know what's there. And it's precarious in itself. And many of us have had to endure so, so much. Sickness and death are sadly a real part of it. It's all around us. We see it every day throughout the world. We even experience it personally. And many of us have, at Seaford have gone through that exact. The question we ask is how do we overcome? How do we overcome? And a lot of us believe that we can. We trust in different things. Some feel like they work, but most don't. As our brokenness continually knocks on our door. Death is at work in all of us. The reason being is that we are plagued with the curse of sin. And because of what happened in the beginning, death and pain and suffering are the reality of life. And it drains us on every side. Even those to proclaim faith in Christ. We still, we still endure it. But as we heard in the Second Corinthians reading, as Paul writes to the church in Corinth, a people who endured so much in themselves, it was a, a place, a, a place of turmoil. It was a seaport where people came and their ethics, inhibitions were left at home and they did what they wanted. And the people of the church, they suffered for it. But for all rights, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Life just closes in, but it doesn't crush us. Sometimes we doubt, we're uncertain, but it doesn't lead us to despair. Others may point at us and even worse about who we are as people of faith, but we know that our Lord is always with us. And even when we're struck down, we are not destroyed because we 
are eternal people. So, why? We know, because there is more. In each of us who believe, we have this treasure, this treasure in jars of clay, and that's us. We're made of the made of the earth. And this treasure we have by the grace of God. And to show that this all surpassing power is from God, it's not from ourselves. So we who believe always carry around in our body the death of Jesus Christ. This is so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. We know that he died in our place, but we know, we know that he has given us life and life eternal. And by faith, we endure. No, more than that, more than that, we thrive. The life of Christ, one for us through the death and resurrection of our Lord, emanates from the faithful. His light shines through us as we endure the pain and suffering of life in this world. We ask, why doesn't God take it from us? You know, one of my favourite books, and it's been made into a series, is called The Last Kingdom. And Bernard Cornwell is the author of the story. It's set in the times when Saxon and Dane were fighting for land in England. Of the UK and the countries of Wessex and Mercia and East Anglia and Northumbria and Wales, Cornwall were all separate but there was a king who wanted to unify it all and it's all centred round a character whose name is Uhtred of Bebenberg, which is a place in uh, Northumbria. And as a child, he was taken in by the Danes and raised as a Dane and became known as Uhtred Ragnarsson. <sighs> Enough about the basis of the story. What I wanted to talk about was a certain scene in season five where the mother of the Queen of Mercia is struggling in prayer because her daughter is dying. And Uhtred walks in and the Queen Mother, she says, he's not listening. He's not talking to me. He's not saying anything. He's not doing anything. And in her anguish, she she struggles. She struggles with the reality of life and a God who seems so distant. And a lot of us feel the same at times. Why doesn't God take it from us? Why doesn't he deal with the pain and suffering in this life? Why doesn't he protect us? and save us. Well, he has. He has the pain and suffering and death that we know that they are doing. We brought it upon ourselves in the very beginning. And yes, it's unfair that we inherited, but you know, figure 
I don't grow hair on my head. Uh, is that unfair? It's nothing. It was out of my control. I know it's benign in comparison, but you know what I'm saying. We've inherited this. But in and through all that, the God of glory has rescued us to eternal life and has promised to walk with us each and every day. And it's his strength and his peace that gets us through, that gets us through. Sometimes he interacts, but most of the time he doesn't. And it's not his doing. He doesn't make these things happen. Yeah. And Christians, fellow believers, we don't get it easier, do we? No. We have to endure the same. One of our friends has just now had an, a knee replacement, and how many of us this year have had that? And I, I've had surgery myself, and a number of us have been through illness, and one of our sisters is carrying the biggest load of all. But because the Lord of glory, this is how we get through, has provided us a hope that is beyond our grasp. In other words, we can't attain this hope ourselves. But get this, get this. He has lavished this hope upon us by his grace. In other words, he has given it to us. And if you're searching, you're listening to this, that gift can be yours as well. It's not going to be an easy road and we can vouch for that. But the Lord of glory will bless you, will bless you more than you understand. And in that life, in that life, that believing life, that's why Paul always write, uh, also writes to the Corinthians and to us today. We who are alive, are made alive in Christ, are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. So in other words, we're dying to self for his sake. So that his life may also be revealed in our mortal bodies, that we can be the witness that he's called us to be. So, I've shared this scripture before and how powerful and beautiful it is. And what a reminder of how much love God has for you and for me. In Hebrews chapter 12, we read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a, such a great cloud of witnesses, the people of faith, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so entangles. Let us embrace that life that God has called us to. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. How? By fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him. The joy of knowing that you would be saved and rescued into eternal life. That joy enabled him to endure the cross, scorning at shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. My friends, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, such pain and suffering and death in our place, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. My friends, 
This is the life that is at work in you. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessing through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask, Lord, that, that as we suffer, as we endure the troubles of this life, that we will show others the strength and peace that you alone can give. I know, Lord, that we can be hypocrites at times. We want so much for this, but we, we don't get it always right. Just like the Apostle Paul said. But Lord, let that simple witness be the power that emanates from these jars of clay so that your light may shine in their lives and they may see the God of love and grace that you are. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lutheran Church has invited its congregations to include the following prayer in this week's prayers as we pray for positive, respectful relationships between all Australians as we mark National Reconciliation Week. Dear Creator, we come before you on National Close the Gap Day with hearts filled with hope and determination. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of this beautiful land, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and we thank you for their wisdom, resilience and knowledge. We pray for healing in our nation as we confront the injustices and disparities that have plagued our Indigenous brothers and sisters for too long. We pray for the health professionals who work tirelessly to close the gap, that they may be filled with compassion and understanding. Guide us, Lord, in our journey towards reconciliation and true friendship. Help us to bridge the gap in cultural understanding and access to health services. Show us how we can each contribute to creating a more equitable and inclusive society. We lift up those who feel hopeless, especially the families and communities affected by suicide. Bring them comfort and peace and help us to support and care for them in their grief. With the same hands, we also lift up the young people who are struggling, feeling lost or hopeless. May they find strength and resilience, and may we as a community offer them support and guidance towards a brighter future. We also give thanks for the wisdom and resilience of our elders who have carried the stories and traditions of their people for generations. May they be filled with strength and courage as they continue to guide their communities, and may we learn from their teachings and wisdom. May we be agents of your healing, Lord working close to close the gap and build a better future for all Australians, especially our young people. Give us the wisdom to learn from the past, the courage to address the present and the vision to create a future where all Australians stand together in equality and harmony. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that unites us, the Lord's Prayer this time sung to you are, you are Our Father, the Aboriginal Lord's Prayer. You are our Father, you live in heaven, we talk to you, Father, you are good. You are our Father, you live in heaven, we talk to you, spread today we believe your word father we are your children give a spread today we have done wrong we are sorry teach us father all about your word we have done wrong we Sorry, teach us, Father, all about your word. Our 
others have done wrong to us and we are sorry for them, Father, today. Others have done wrong to us and we are sorry for them, Father, today. Stop us from doing wrong, Father, save us all from the evil one. Stop us from doing wrong, Father, save us all from the evil one. You are our Father, you live in heaven, we talk to you, Father, you are good. You are our Father, you live in heaven, we talk to you, Father, you are good. On our life's up and down journey, when we fall, when we fail, when we struggle, when we're in pain, our loving God is always there to lift us up, pick up the pieces of our broken lives and put us back together again. So we go now knowing that God, through his immeasurable grace, has reconciled us to himself and given us the gift of eternal life. May we go forward with confidence, with actions that point to him, to serve others in love. May we speak his word of truth, justice, reconciliation and grace with a voice loud and clear. And we only do that because we have Jesus and the Spirit living in us. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be, which, be with each of us now and forever. Amen.